object-oriented programming. Object-oriented programming is a concept. Okay, just like car is a concept, mobile phone is a concept. Object-oriented programming is also a concept. Any language can adopt these properties or these features of a object-oriented programming. What exactly do we have in object-oriented programming? There are certain properties which needs to be satisfied by any language so that it can be called as an object-oriented programming. So object-oriented programming is one of the revolutionary concepts in entire you know software industry. So uh, you know some people always think that you know why do we have to go for object-oriented programming? We already have a procedural programming. So there is a lot of difference between procedural programming and object-oriented programming and uh, why do we have to all learn and understand about object programming is what I'll, I'll be telling you first. Before that, what exactly is the full form of hoops? Can anyone tell you? Object-oriented object programming. Object-oriented programming? System. system. Okay. okay, so object-oriented programming systems. So this is something which we normally uh, have the full form of hoops. And now let's come to the concept of a normal programming. In normal programming, I'll take a very simple example, like, you know, if at all, if you are staying at your flat uh, and you're alone and you, you, one of your friend comes to visit you and you would have to prepare the food. So how many dishes would you normally prepare for your friend? One. One or two at the max three. Okay. So one or two dishes is what you will prepare and you will try to convince them to be happy with what, what you already have you know providing them okay so for example like you know you have uh, you have prepared rice and dal so you're try, trying to tell them that you know you try to convince your friends that you know this is the best you can have okay so the same thing happens in procedural programming also you prepare a program or you develop a requirement and you try to convince the customer that this is the best that they can give that they can get and if the if the client doesn't get some features which are actually being expected by the client you try to convince them because do you say that you know technically it's not possible or something like that but when it comes to object-oriented programming it's completely you know you can provide the client more than what the client expects so now let's say let's take the let's carry forward the same example that we took okay so you don't have the you know patience to cook the food and what you do you actually you know you are preparing the you, you don't have the mood to prepare the food or you don't have the patience so you go out and you know you go out and take your friend to a buffet so what happens in a buffet here you are convincing your friend to you know uh, adjust with two or three dishes but here when you go to a buffet you you encourage them to eat at least 20 to 30 different uh, you know uh, 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 you know recipes why is it so because you all you have in in a buffet you have everything ready in place so instead of uh, so instead of going for a single or one or two recipes you're going for multiple uh, you know dishes so in this dishes like you know you can have you can taste 20 to 30 dishes and you encourage them to you know taste every dish because here in the buffet you don't have to prepare everything on your own so you're not wasting your time you're not wasting your resources to prepare all the dishes the dishes are already ready made okay they're kept ready you can once you pay a, a fixed amount you can eat any anything any any a, a, what how much how much you want you can eat it this is the you know advantage of object oriented programming in object oriented programming you already have lot of code been designed in classes there will be a lot of standard classes whether it might be java whether it might be c++ whether it might be abap when you adapt when you are adapting object oriented programming you have even in python so in object oriented programming there are a lot of predefined code that we can make use of and we can build build our developments okay and in 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 object oriented programming it always happens that you can provide more number of features than the client is expecting from you okay instead of convincing the client to you know adjust with what you give you give you give more features than the client expects because everything is ready-made you all that you have to do is you have to make use of the uh, make use of the existing classes and then you know give the features but the major the tricky part in object programming is how to make use of the classes which are already there okay the procedure in which you call them which class have to be called in in, in what you know requirement this is a tricky part so same thing, you know, if I take the example of a you know buffet. So if somebody says that you, you went to a buffet, you felt that this is the best buffet. But somebody else comes to you and you know, you are you are you, you any one of anyone if your friend comes to you and says that okay, this this was the worst buffet that I ever had. You wonder right now what exactly happened with him with him or her. So you realize that the way they eat the uh, you know buffet was not correct. Like you know, for example, they are they are putting the salad in the soup or you know. Uh, papad in the sambar so something the combination of the the, the combination that they ate was not good same thing happens in classes also what classes have to be used for what requirement is something which we need to know okay once you become an expert in it it's very easy to build object programming you know programs 
Now, what are the features of a class? Okay, before starting about the features of a class, if I show you this uh, diagram and say you this is a car, will you accept it's a car? No. No. Why? It does not have any steering. It does not have wheels. It does, it cannot move from one place to another place. So if you have to call a product as a object as a class. Uh, as, a, as a car you need to have some features it should have wheels it should move from one place to another place so all these features have to be imbibed only then it can be called as an uh, as a as, as a car so just like a car is a concept object oriented programming is also a concept just like you cannot tell every other object as a as a car you cannot call every other programming language as a object oriented programming you need to have some basic features just like car should have wheels and it should have engine same way we we have some features those features is what we need to understand to uh, you know make sure that a programming is called object oriented programming so there are certain features that we have to have in an object oriented programming object oriented programming actually makes use of a predefined code or it's called classes the so classes can be instantiated and those instantiated classes can be used in our program so there in, in this it, it it gives an emphasis on the objects okay and uh, you know procedural programming gives emphasis on the procedure okay and here we have bottom up approach in the in the object oriented programming and here we have procedural program top down top down approach so what is bottom up approach is first we build the classes and then we we'll build the program okay very like in the procedural program we start the program and then we build the features okay here the features are already been built in the classes and then we have the accessing the oops concepts to you know uh, use you know you you have a choice of making a program or a, pro, a piece of program as a pri public private proprietary so you have an access of controlling the data and controlling the information within the program and we have lot of you know other uh, other advantages we'll see in the in the coming se coming uh, sessions okay so basically if you have to call an a, a, a programming as an object oriented programming it should basically follow four main properties okay so those are you know inheritance polymorphism abstraction and encapsulation abstraction is something which has been followed by every programming language even if it's a pro procedural program we normally use the abstraction so it's not the highlight so we always em um, give more emphasis on the inheritance polymorphism and encapsulation okay so every everywhere we start the object oriented programming the first thing that we build is class and out of the class taking the help of a class we copy the properties into the object so we create an object so we have a class we create an object and that object needs to be used in our program so there are four major features that we are going to look at the inheritance polymorphism abstraction and encapsulation so what exactly is abstraction so for example you are you are basically not worried about what are the things that are defined in the back end so we make use of only those definitions or those those declarations which are important for our program for example if you see the person who is actually you know doing a transaction in a bank is least bothered about what exactly is happening in the back end so this process is already there it's been defined but we use it whatever is required we'll use it so that's that's something called abstraction so abstraction is a process of you know making use of what exactly is defined Uh, polymorphism what exactly is polymorphism polymorphism is a concept of of a same method being being you know uh, giving a different output in different classes for example you switch on the second switch in this lab you will you will be getting a you will be a lights will be switched on but the same second switch in the other lab might switch on the fan okay so there is a different you know possibility so the same method can act differently in different classes is called polymorphism for example if you take the slide which we have here uh, a person is acting act, actually acting as a different person in different places person is same but he is acting like you know he is acting like a father in the family he is acting like a you know uh, he is acting like a officer uh, uh, in a manager in in an office and he is acting like a you know uh, a customer in the in the in the supermarket so in different places the same person is acting differently that's called polymorphism where in same method okay let's understand i assume that this person is a method so this method is is is, is acting differently in different classes so this is what happens in the polymorphism and what exactly is inheritance inheritance is copying the you know declarations or copying the properties of a superclass into a subclass is called inheritance so there are different levels of inheritance like public section private section private section which will come uh, which will discuss in the coming sessions but here you know for example if there is a super class okay from the super class you are you are you are you are you are deriving a class so when you derive a class 
most of the properties of the uh, superclass can be inherited into the subclass. So the, this you know derived class is called subclass. Okay, so this is the inheritance concept. Very like you know you have a you have a base class which is called you know uh, superclass, and from the superclass we are copying the properties into subclass. So this process is called inheritance. So what is an object? Object is an instantiation of a class. So what exactly is instantiation is you copy the properties of a class into the object and then make use of it in your in your in your object. You can create, as you said, you can create multiple objects for a single class. It's always possible. So you have like you know, this is an object, these are the objects, this is the class. So I have another example of a you know a object in the class. This is an example of an object in the class. If if let's say let's take a building as a class, then Empire State is a object and it's a specific. If dog is a class, then you have you know a Lassie is a object. And if it's like computer is a computer is not a class, then your computer, your personal laptop which you have in front of you is a uh, is a object. So this is one example of it. Now. Encapsulation is like you know we have a lot of things around us which are encapsulated. Your laptop is encapsulated. Your phone is encapsulated. So what we basically do is we are least bothered about what exactly is happening inside the encapsulated object. For example, you know what happens in the phone, we are least bothered. What you do, okay, if you give some input, what should be the output is actually we are bothered about. So we have import parameters, export parameters, which actually enables us to interface with the class. So we are least bothered about what happens inside the class. So whether, whether it's, it's a projector, whether, whether it's a computer, whether it's a phone or any watch, anything is encapsulated. So we are least bothered about what exactly happens inside it. We are mostly focusing on the import and export. So we make use of it. That's, that's it. So it's not that you encapsulation does not mean that it is completely, you know, you are, you'll not be able to access it. Okay. So if you want to access, if you want to see what is there inside your lap, uh, mobile, you can just break it and see, right? Okay. You can break it and see uh, you can, you can, you can open the laptop and see. Okay. But we are not, no, we are not bothered about it because we take it for granted that it's working fine. And then we, we make use of this. Same thing happens with the class. We never get into the class and see a standard class, okay, specifically standard classes, and we never get into the standard class and check whether it is correct or not, okay. We take it for granted it's it's pro properly working, and then we always check our program, not the uh, standard classes which have been provided to us. So that's encapsulation. Encapsulation is covering certain things, okay. And you know, for example, inside uh, encapsulation, you have variables. We are not bothered bothered about what are the variables that have been declared. We are not bothered about what are the methods that have been declared. And, you know these are all imbibed into a single class so we are not bothered about all these things we make use of the import and export parameters and then we get the output which we want so here we have abstraction so abstraction is you know making use of it from the front end so abstraction you can say like you know the front end is abstraction that we are making use of that from there we can access all the things that's a process of abstraction process of making use of the back end process from the front end and then we have the encapsulation is like you know it's covering okay it's covering all the technology which is behind the screen so this is, that is called encapsulation now if it's a class inside a class we'll have methods and we'll have the attributes other than methods and attributes we'll also have events so these events we are going to discuss about that in detail so any method that we already have seen any method which we which we declare in a class needs to have an implementation in the implementation section which we'll see discuss So here we have a super class and a child class. Child class is called subclass. So super class and subclass. So if you have super class, remember most of the properties of a sub uh, super class can be copied into subclass, but they can be overwritten with the with the properties. For example, you already define a as a character in the super class. You can redefine it as a numeric in the subclass. By default, it will copy those properties, but you can rewrite them. So this is what happens. Animals, all the animals have some basic features. For example, if I say all the animals are, uh, you know, um, all the animals, you know, eat food. Okay. So there, there might be some, uh, you know, reptiles or something like that. They don't eat food. So they just, you know, drink something. Okay. Something like that. So the properties can be overwritten at the subclass level. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And we'll continue from here in the next session.